leprosy. If you would have said that word in the ancient world, people would have been struck with fear. To have leprosy, which included any disease of the skin, was to be ostracized from the community, as we heard in the gospel. You would have been prevented from worshiping with the community because you were ritually unclean. You would have been separated from your family and friends, lest you touch another person, making that person ritually unclean. Over the years, people discovered that most skin diseases could be treated, greatly reducing the social stigma and the fears around people with skin diseases. Do we have lepers today? I would suggest that people with mental illness can often be treated as lepers. You say the word depression or anxiety, and many people freeze or look away, or worse, question the validity of illnesses that cannot be seen. Those types of unhelpful responses and the shame they cause lead to a lot of mental illness going undiagnosed. That which is diagnosed too often goes untreated. And many who seek treatment find too few resources. All of this means that not everyone who needs help gets help, which can lead to all sorts of other issues. Loss of productivity at work or school, loneliness, estrangement in families, use of alcohol or other drugs to treat symptoms, and too often self-harm, including suicide. When I last spoke about mental illness, despair, and suicide, I reflected on some of the causes affecting adults. But this is not just an adult issue. Increasing numbers of young people are struggling with anxiety, depression, eating disorders, and other mental health issues. I was talking with a family therapist this week who told me that her practice is full of young people, middle school, high school, college students, all struggling with life. She also confirmed a report that I had heard from others that mental health facilities at hospitals around the cities, they're full of young people. What is going on? First and foremost, if you take nothing else from this homily, remember this. Mental health issues are real and must be taken seriously. And those struggling with a mental health issue need our love and support and access to good care. Mental health issues can result from a variety of factors, including early trauma, genetics, biochemical imbalances. They can also be the result of environmental issues, which is where I want to focus today. Many of you with teenagers share your concerns with me. They are overscheduled, running from event to event. Smartphones and other devices keep them plugged in 24-7. They must always be on. Social media often encourages them to expect for perfection of themselves, even though perfection, the perfection demanded is unattainable. Sometimes social me media is the place of great bullying. There is pressure to perform at a high level in academics, sports, and other activities even though the person may not have the gifts or talents in that area. And when they do not perform at the expected level, they can often see themselves as a failure. My therapist friend said that an increasing number of young people are experiencing confusion around sexual identity. They look at their bodies and they say, okay, I'm a male or I'm a female. But they hear people in the culture saying, well, don't be so sure of that. Young people are growing up in a world in which science is seen by many to be the final arbiter of every human question, making God irrelevant and faith in God foolish. But of course, if God does not exist, then their purpose in life must be found in the world. 
and they would quickly discover that the world is a very cruel and unforgiving place and will never answer, be the answer to their deepest longings. So imagine this, no God, no absolute truths, no purpose in life, a demand for perfection that is unattainable. No wonder our young people are struggling. As I mentioned at the beginning of Mass earlier today in Rome, Pope Francis canonized five saints for the church. Among those saints is John Henry Newman, one of the greatest minds in the last 200 years, who grew up in the Anglican church but prayed himself and thought himself into the Catholic church later in life. When he was a teenager in England, Newman experienced a great conversion to Jesus. He came to believe in a very deep and personal way the message of faith that St. Paul wrote to Timothy in today's second reading, namely that Jesus died and rose from the dead, and that if we stay faithful to Christ, if we persevere with Christ, we shall reign with him in glory. Newman spent his entire adult life thinking, praying, preaching, writing about Jesus and the truths of our faith. Today as a church, we say with confidence that Newman now sees Jesus face to face. I took a class on Newman in the seminary studying some of his many works. Some of his, of my favorite lines from Newman are on a holy card that you're going to be given as you leave church today. Newman wrote this, God has created me to do some definite service for him. He has committed some work to me which he has not committed to another. I have my mission. Young people, God loves you so much that he entrusts you with some mission that he's given to nobody else. Regardless of what you think about yourself or what anyone else thinks, God has not created you for not, as Newman says. In other words, you matter simply because you exist. God did not make a mistake in creating you. As I have said to you in other homilies, God intentionally thought you and loved you into being. You are made in God's image and likeness and you have dignity simply because you are. God has a plan for you and fills you with the gifts to fulfill that plan. That's awesome news, right? That's awesome news. But it's difficult to understand and accept unless we have faith in Jesus. By his life, death, and resurrection, Jesus demonstrates his love for us, shows us our dignity as human beings, and foreshadows our destiny. Where Jesus has gone, that's where we are supposed to follow. We live our life knowing that God is with us and desires our success. And even when we fall or turn away from God, God never abandons us, but searches us, searches for us as a shepherd searches for a lost sheep. Then he writes this great line, whatever and wherever I am, I can never be thrown away. That's a great line. And all of us need to come back to that line, especially when we are finding life difficult. When I fail a test, I cannot be thrown away. When I get cut from a team, I cannot be thrown away. When my boyfriend or girlfriend breaks up with me, I cannot be thrown away. When I do stupid things, like my parents did when they were my age, I cannot be thrown away. When I'm struggling with depression or anxiety or eating disorder, thoughts of hurting myself, I cannot be thrown away. Not even by myself. Remember, in both difficult and in joyful times, you have a mission from God. You have a purpose from God. God did not create you for naught. He's thought you into existence to do something for him. Trust and believe in that. With St. Paul and now St. John Newman, believe with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength that Jesus died and rose from the dead for you that you are loved unconditionally and eternally by God, and that your destiny is to share in God's glory after you have completed your work here on earth. 
Young people, faith in Jesus, even the deepest faith, does not mean that your issues will suddenly vanish and your life will always be peaceful. Jesus did not promise that. You will still face many challenges, maybe mental health challenges. But you will face these challenges knowing that Jesus is with you, the church is with you, and that in the end, God is victorious just as he was victorious in today's readings. To my dear parents, if your son or daughter is struggling, acting differently, not enjoying activities they used to enjoy, do not look away. Talk to them, and more importantly, listen to them. If necessary, seek professional help for them like you would if they had the flu or a broken arm. Young people, if you are struggling, and certainly if you're thinking about hurting yourself, talk to mom or dad or a counselor at school. Please believe me when I say things are never as bad as you think they are. Do not be afraid to ask for help. I encourage all of us to learn more about mental illness so that we can react appropriately when someone comes to us with this issue. How comforting, how respectful, how Christian it is for us to be able to meet people where they are. Environmental factors are creating significant mental health issues for many of our young people, and of course not just for young people. We need to reorder and reprioritize those factors if we are to live flourishing and full lives. A key to this reordering is for us to reclaim Sunday as the Lord's Day, making it a day of rest and recreation. Families on Sundays, be at Mass together, pray together, have fun together, relax together, unplug together. Even God rested on the seventh day. Please work with other families to fight back against the culture that makes outrageous claims on the life of your children and your family. Mental illness, is it the leprosy of our day? As a community, we need to have an honest and ongoing conversation about this issue let us not be afraid of mental illness in the same way that the ancient world was afraid of leprosy, causing unnecessary suffering to so many. Rather, let us place our faith in Jesus Christ and the healing gifts that he has given to the church, to the family, and to healthcare professionals. Today, in a very special way, let us call on St. John Henry Newman and the other saints canonized today asking for their intercession, that those who suffer with mental illness know the healing experienced by Naaman and the 10 lepers, and recognizing that that healing comes from God, they would return to offer praise and thanksgiving to the Lord.